Hi, my name is Simon Harris, Research Director and Co-Founder at Providence Property Group. A question that we get asked a lot is about property cycles. Do property or does property move in, in, in cycles? Um, you know, where are we in the cycle? What can we expect moving forward? You know, what's going to happen in the next year, two years, five years, even 10 years? And this is um, a really important part of our research and it's something that we pay very, very close attention to. So historically, property does move in very clear cycles. Um, typically, these cycles un, uh, unfold over about 18 to 20 years. Um, they are predictable, uh, they do repeat, and when you go back and study the data, you can actually see them very, very clearly. So uh, when I say they're 18 to 20 years, in fact, we can even be a bit more specific than that. They're usually around about 18 to 19 years. Um, usually about 18.6 years in, uh, in length, uh, peak to peak or bottom to bottom. So the last uh, large cyclical bottom in Australia was uh, during the GFC, uh, it was around about uh, 2010, 2011. And then we, uh, the previous cyclical bottom before that uh, was uh, around about um, uh, 92, 93. Um, if you're old enough to remember Paul Keating's recession we had to have. And then there was one prior to that um, in about uh, 1976, and there was one prior to that uh, in around about 1955. So, so these cycles actually do, uh, they do, they do repeat, um, and we follow them very, very carefully. Uh, what that enables us to do is, um, is really see where we are in the cycle and uh, have a good idea of, of what's coming next. So what we've done with these cycles is we've actually divided them into four key phases and um, 24 stages. And these stages, uh, they, they, uh, they occur one after another, of course, but uh, often you'll get two or three occurring at once. Um, so there is overlap between uh, these stages. So they don't necessarily occur uh, in lockstep one after the other, there's, there's often overlap. So in terms of where we are in the cycle, um, as I said, these cycles um, repeat very clearly and historically. So we do have a very good idea of where we are right now. So going back to um, the GFC 27 through to about 2007 through to about 2011, um, we really moved into that, um, we, we moved through that peak or what we call a peak crash recovery phase. And uh, coming out of the peak crash recovery phase, we, uh, we moved into the first upswing, which really occurred for seven years from about 2011 through to about uh, 2018. And what we're moving into now is part of the cycle that we were absolutely expecting around about 2019, 2020, uh, that we call the mid-cycle slowdown. Now, during the mid-cycle slowdown, uh, you can, as the name would suggest, uh, property can often take a bit of a hiatus during this period. You can see prices actually uh, move into decline, which is exactly what we've seen. So. During this period, you'll see prices drift sideways. You might see in certain markets prices retrace, which is exactly what we've seen and is really what we expected uh, in 2019, 2020. And then what we expect following that, moving into 2021 through to about 2026, 2027, is what we call the, um, the second upswing or the boom phase. Um, and usually the second upswing or boom phase is actually quite a lot stronger in terms of price growth than what, we'd, uh, up, what, what we would expect to see in the first upswing. So our um, projections in terms of property is that um, now is in fact a very good time to buy while there's some weakness in the market. And as we move into uh, later this year and into 2020, we expect to come out of this mid-cycle slowdown and we expect to see prices start to um, to, to, to um, put the accelerator on and start to grow further again as we move into that second upswing or boom phase. So look, in summary, our view is that before the second upswing or boom phase really kicks off in you know, mid to late 2020, what we would really advise is that now is a, a good time to buy while there is still um, some caution, um, some concern, some sideways movement, some weakness in the market, um, and really a market that, as we've talked about before, has switched from a, a seller's market to a buyer's market. So there's the opportunity to capitalise and take advantage of the current weakness in the market, buy at better prices than during boom times. And so really, um, before the second 
upswing or the boom kicks in, uh, now or right now is a very, very good time to buy.